This is how you can create custom rows in Swift UI without the little gray separator line between each row. I'm going to do some really cool customization, so if you're into this, keep watching with me. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> Before we get started, quick note about this video. I came across some beta bugs as I was recording and doing the code and I decided to leave those bugs in the video. I did not edit them out. So there are times in this video where I'm sitting there waiting for builds and talking about the bugs that we found, and you get to see as we try to resolve those as well. So that's just a heads up. Let's get going. Okay, we'll go ahead and open up Xcode 11 right now. And disclaimer, I'm using the first uh, Xcode 11 beta that came out and also the first macOS Catalina beta that came out as well. So if... Uh, Things are a little weird and glitchy. We'll just go along and we'll see what happens. But here we go. I'm going to open up a brand new project too so we can just see exactly how this is working. All right. I already had this project here, but let's just do a brand new one. Create a new Xcode project. iOS right there. Single view app. And we'll hit next. And we'll just call this custom rows. This should be cool. Oh, yeah. And, of course, make sure you select use Swift UI. Hit next. And I'll just put it on my desktop. All right, here we are. So let's enlarge this a bit so you can see it. Take it to the edge of the island there and to about down here. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go up here to the top right, close some panels there, and minimize this and hit resume. Wait for that preview to come up. Then we'll get rolling. Come on. Build succeeded. And there we go. Okay. Hello world. Um, okay. Here we go. Let's start with a Z stack. So if you don't know what the Z stack is, that is the kind of stack that will, you know, everything you put in here, in this part right here, will overlap each other. And let's do something called a rounded rectangle. And we'll give it... See, it has a few things you can do. I'll hit escape right here. Okay. To bring up your options, if you knew that, you can hit escape. We'll do corner radius, length, and we'll choose eight. This is going to be really cool. I think you're going to really like this. So this is looking pretty crazy over here so far, but that's all right. It'll get better. So let's put some properties in here. Foreground. No. And that's one thing about beta, too, is the autocomplete is just pretty rough. All right. Foreground color, white. Okay, we got that white there. And let's put a shadow on here. I don't know if you're into that kind of thing, but for this uh, tutorial, we'll just do that. Okay, we'll give it a length of one. And then there are actually other properties you can do in there, like there's an X and there's a Y. But we'll just do the Y for now. So whether it goes left or right, like the shadow, right? Position left or right or up and down. So we'll move it down one. And we will also give it a frame. So this is the part that I don't love. Um, I think... This is probably a bug right here. I, I think because you can do like a relative width like this. I wish it would autocomplete. Come on, so I can show you relative width, and then you give it like a value. So if it was like that, it should like fill up the whole, like the width of the parent like that. Um, I believe from my understanding that's what it is. But right now it isn't working at this time of the recording. So we'll just do a frame right now, and then we'll give it a width, and we'll say UI screen. And main, bounds, width, and what we're going to do is minus 32, because on both sides, here, you can see this over here in the preview on the right. So, see the uh, square, this like little teeny blue outline here? It's showing what I'm doing right now. So, if I change this to 16, or 16, you see it goes in a little closer to the edge. So, I wanted 16 on both sides, but right now, it's 8 here and 8 here. So... It's splitting it up. So I'm going to do 32 so that I have 16 on both sides. So that's really cool. So there's my width. And we'll also give it a height. We'll come down here and we'll say height 80. I don't like this hard-coded thing. I, I wish it was more dynamic. If you know a way to do that right now, please let me know. Constructive criticism, right? Uh, in the comments or, you know, Twitter, whatever. Um, we're all here to learn together. So, yep. Don't give me some big glaring, like, capital letters, LOL, why'd you do this, you know, type of thing. We're all here to be nice. We're all here to learn. So here we go. We'll do an alignment as well. Alignment. 
and we'll say center. Cool. So you can already see this taking form here. See this? I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little more. And I'll even go like this so you can see even more. Okay. See that? So we have a little bit of a shadow there, more on the bottom than we do on the top because of this. I brought it down one and Y, so I'll, I'll change it to zero and you'll see. So I do zero, it's just like, it's uniform all the way around. It's the same shadow. But bring it down one, we'll give it a little bit of a different look, like a little bit lifted at the bottom, a little closer to the, closer to the whatever there at the top. So that's what we're going to do for this tutorial. Looks kind of neat. All right, let's keep going. So there's our rounded rectangle. I kind of wanted to do that just kind of as like the base of our, our row, right? So now overlapping this rounded rectangle, I'm going to do an H stack, so a horizontal stack. So anything I put inside here is going to go left to right. It's going to like, you know, position itself left to right to each other instead of up and down, which would be a V stack, a vertical stack. So in this Z stack, remember, it's overlapping. So H stack, let's do a text. And let's do... Um, a name right here. We'll say name. We'll just like, do a bunch of names. And actually, we'll do something about the Beatles. This will be cool. So we'll do an accent color right here. And we'll do primary. This is just built in, that primary one. Just gives you a nice dark color right there. And then another property here we will do is padding. That will just give, if we just do open close parentheses like that and no value inside, it'll give us a nice default padding that is already built in for us and it's recommended you don't put your own values in there and kind of start tweaking them because if you leave it default like this the way they have it set up it will it will look the best as it scales to like other devices and everything else so if you have to to get it just right you know and everything you know put some numbers in there but you know otherwise just leave it like that if you can but it's ultimately up for you, up to you, up to you, up to you. Okay, spacer. And now we're going to, so that will just push everything to the left. So let's go and comment that out. Command forward slash. Okay, see it's in the center right now, over here on the right. And we'll uncomment that spacer. Pushes everything. It just like puts the spacer to the right of it right there. And it will go, boom, and just pushes everything over. All right. And now we're going to do an image. And we'll do system name like this. And this is going to be one of those uh, SF symbols that you might have heard about when they announced it in WWDC. And I, I was reading Dave Verwer's iOS Dev Weekly and some article in there, I can't remember who it was, I should have done my research before this uh, video, but they're saying that these are actually blurry. So they're supposed to be SVGs, right? Maybe they're blurry for some reason. But for this tutorial, we're going to do this. Uh, you can actually go and download the SF uh, symbols and actually see the exact names. So we'll do Chevron right. See that came up over here? Chevron right. If we did left, it would be left. Cool. But let's not get too off track. Let's just uh, keep going through here so you can see what we're doing. So let's give this image a foreground color. And we'll do purple. Like that. Be kind of nice. See, changed right there. It's already updated. Okay. And then we'll give it another thing. We will say padding. And right here, I'm going to put something inside here, but it's not my own custom like eight or something like that. See how it changed over there? I'm going to do dot trailing because there's like dot leading, which would be the left side. But I want to do trailing, which is just the right. So right there, you see now it's like right there at the edge. We're going to fix all this. You'll see. All right. And that's the next part right here. So we've got our Z stack, round rectangle in there, then overlapping it is this H stack. And then on this, so if you hold down um, Alt or like the Option key and you hover over your curly brace, you can see the opening one, opening and closing, matching one. See that? It's really cool. So on the Z stack, we're going to add some padding. We're going to say padding, and then inside it, we're going to give it an array. So we're going to, we want it to do padding on the leading, so like the left, and also on the trailing. Because you can also do um, bottom and top. But right now we just want the left and right. And see how it pushed it right in there? So now this is pushed over nicely. Right here. The name is a little bit over from the left. And this chevron is a little bit over from the right. That looks great. So just to give you context on that, let's go ahead and enter that down and comment it out. And watch it change over here. So now it's right at the edge, right? So undo that. Pops right back in. So that's looking pretty good. All right. 
So this is what we want to do. Let's, uh, let's make an array of names, right? So we'll say at state because if this struct here gets recreated, right? When like the view needs to like recreate itself, then we don't want this um, array of strings to like get recreated and just start over from scratch. We want it to stay, right? And stay how we've changed it. Like if we've added names to it. All right, so let's do the Beatles, right? So let's do John, it's like John Lennon. And let's do Paul for Paul McCartney. And George for George Harrison. And Ringo for Ringo Starr. Ringo. Okay, there we go. Let's give ourselves a little more room here so the text doesn't wrap around. Okay, nice. There are names, and we want to list these names here, right? Let's hit resume up here in the corner so we can get that live preview going again. Maybe we'll make it a little smaller. Okay, this is where we're going to get some exciting stuff going. So we want to repeat this row as if it were a list, right? So we can just wrap this whole thing in a for each. You, you, you might be thinking like, okay, just put it in a list, and then you're done, right? But hold on, wait a second for me. That The list is what gives you those the gray lines in between the rows. And at the time of this recording, list doesn't DQ cell, so just keep that in mind. So here we go. We're going to do a for each. It's built in there. And we're going to say self.names. And we're going to say identified by, and do this backslash dot self, right? So we can get that actual um, string value right there to identify it by, make it unique. And then it will open this up and say name in, enter, right? So we're going to loop over this array. A good way to read this, if you're not familiar with it, is so for every or for each name in names, the names array, do something with that name right there. So do something right here with that name, right? Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to get this whole Z stack right here, and we are going to bring it up in here. If you don't know how I did that right there, uh, bring it all up at once, watch, uh, I'll link to a video where I have a bunch of Xcode keyboard shortcuts that I use a lot. So, and you'll notice in the beta, there's a little, a few bugs with like indentations. So you'll notice, um, that curly, curly brace right there with the Z stack is a little off now that I moved it up, but I'll just hit delete right there. Let's see everything else is lining up. Nice. So it's a Z stack. This is all overlapping stuff, right? But we want each row, like each one of these cells, if you will, uh, each one of these rows, we want them to be up from the top down to the bottom. So that's where we would use a vertical stack, a V stack, right? So like this and open it up. And we'll actually go like this. We're going to give this a parameter because everything inside of it, we want to align to the left. So we'll say alignment and we'll say leading like that. We'll take this C stack, highlight it right here, and move it up like that. And you'll see it all of a sudden over here. It will not come on. Come on. Okay, at some point it'll work. Ooh, I have another thing in here. Oh, another thing. Oh, wow. That's doing like a bunch of different previews. That's kind of interesting. Huh. Anyway. I'm sure we'll get it figured out. So a V stack. Then we've got our Z stack. Ah, it's because, hey, where did that for each go? Oh yeah, that's what I did wrong. Um, let's take that V stack out of there. That's why it's given us a whole bunch of different previews. That's kind of interesting. Bug, I guess? Radar, anyone? All right. So we actually needed to put it around the whole for each. Sorry about that. So let's go right here and we'll go V stack like this. And we'll put it back on our, in our alignment. Align mint and we'll give it leading right that open this up take this for each and the z stack right there bring it up inside the v stack and now you'll see all these rows see they immediately popped up all right cool i'm glad you got to see that kind of happen where i accidentally put it in the wrong spot and that that weird thing how it made a bunch of different uh device previews that was kind of cool all right so now it's all in the center here like in the middle of the screen and so we want it up at the top so Let's see here. Let's put this inside a scroll view. But before we do, let's take this out. Let's go like this. And well, first, before I do that, look at this name. I'm going to catch myself because I don't want to leave this in hard coded. See this name that we're using right here? We're going to put that right here in the text view. So let's put name right there. And now, see that? 
John Paul George Ringo over here on the right. Nice. Perfectly. Okay, here we go. Let's fix this again like we did before. All right, but let's take this all out into its own view. And this is going to be a cool thing you're going to see. I'm going to hold down Command, and I'm going to hover over Z stack because this is basically my whole cell, right? My whole row is this Z stack. So I'm going to command, hold down Command and tap on Z stack, and I'm going to say Extract Subview. Watch this. Bing bong. Just like that. And it extracted it down here. So that's a little bit of a bug. It extracts it down there below. And I believe sometimes it even like forgets a, a curly brace. Let's see. No. Maybe it's just like indented weird, right? So I'm just going to not do that because I don't want to like deal with what if it did it wrong right now in this beta. So let's just cut this, Command X, and let's make our our new struct right here. We'll say struct. We'll say uh, name row. And we'll come down here. And we're actually going to give it a property. We'll say let name equal string. Or not equal. Name the property of a string type, right? So then we'll come down here. And every view. So I forgot to do this. So view. So this name row will be a view. So every view needs to have a body, right? Like this in Swift UI. And we'll say some view. Just like that. So then we'll paste in our Z stack. Just like that. And you'll notice if I come over here and I hit resume, I mean, it probably won't even work because this body is empty right here. So it's like failed. So this is going to be good. So since we have this let right here, this struct will automatically have an initializer with this name property. So we can come up here and use our name row. Name row. Like that. Open up parentheses. See it's right there. Hit enter and we'll pass in name which is just this one right here. So then, let's try again up here on the right. There we go. Build succeeded. The names are there. We're using our custom row. Nice and organized right there. Nice. Okay, now, like I was saying before, we can put this in a scroll view, just like this. That's <laughs> That, believe it or not, is how easy a scroll view can be in Swift UI. See that right? It already brought it all the way to the top. And like you can see the little blue outline right here. It's like perfectly right here, up here in the safe area, below the notch, and right down here. Very cool. So you're going to see some more cool stuff about this in a minute and a bug later on. So we've got our scroll view, right? This should scroll if it had enough rows to go off the screen. And we'll do that in a bit. But right now, if you're curious in this, let's hit the, the play button right here. So you can see the live interaction with this. Because right now, it there's like basically no interaction, right? Like, yeah, you can click these, but noth nothing, nothing's happening. They don't highlight, they don't go anywhere. So we actually do want a detail view with this, right? So, and, and this can be buggy a lot of times, this uh, live preview, just kind of like, and waiting for it and stuff. But I mean, I guess that's the same as waiting for a simulator start. But sometimes it's nice to just run it on the simulator so you can actually like know you're getting what you're getting. And you'll see what I mean by that in a bit. Okay, so we've got this whole scroll view here. That's cool. But like I was saying, we want this in a navigation. So first of all, I'm going to hit this stop button. Did you see how it glitched that like black right there? It's because when you kind of try to make changes over here on the left, while it's still blue right here, while it's still like in this live like interaction preview where you can interact with it, then it gets all, it can get kind of weird and like go black and kind of like, like go small and big. So you'll find out if you mess around with that. So right here, Above the scroll view, let's put in a navigation uh, navigation view, just like this. <laughs> Swift UI is pretty amazing. I love how easy it can be to just do <laughs> things that took so much code in, in UIKit, that take so much code in UIKit. Um, so this is just tons of fun for me. Okay, so let's put the Beatles up here, up here in the uh, nav bar, like a title. And you always want to do that in the direct child, the first child right there underneath the navigation view. So this curly brace right here, we're going to put the navigation bar title. Navigation bar title, no autocomplete here in beta. And you don't just put your string directly in there like that. You actually put in a view, which is very cool because you could put like an image in there, right? And so right now we're just going to put text. We'll say the Beatles. And I apologize, that was probably a terrible accent. Okay, the Beatles, right there. It's looking good. Pretty sharp, right there. John Paul, George Ringo. Sweet. 
Okay, we've got our navigation view. So let's run this, like I said, Command R. Let's see if anything happens. You might know what's missing here if you're paying attention or if you've messed with this already or anyway. It's part of the plan, okay? <laughs> what's your plan tomorrow night, Brain? Okay. And I don't want to cut out any of this like waiting because I want you to see what it's really like, um, how long this all takes when you're building and everything. So I'm waiting for this iPhone XR. <laughs> XR, yeah. It's an XR, okay? Xer. Xer. This iPhone XR. Tenor. Tenor. The iPhone XR. I'm waiting for that to launch up. And we'll see how it goes. Is it up and it's just hiding? Probably. Oh, here it is. Okay. Come on. Dee do do. Dee do do. Be 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 be. What's happening? Someone. Bueller. Oh, hey, there's me. Hey, that's my name. Yeah, it needs to take control of another process and debugging to continue. Okay, let's put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for my password. That's pretty good. Could not attach to PID. Hmm. Interesting. Should have hit details. Oh well. Okay, is this even gonna work? I don't know. Let's uh, run it again. Oh, it didn't have a stop button, so maybe it wasn't running. That's weird. So now this stop is highlighted. So, okay, launching custom rows. Bear with me here. This is part of the process. I hope you are, are like, okay, this is nice to see because I like to. <laughs> if you it, like, if you haven't messed around with Swift UI yet, or if you kind of are scared to install any beta things, or you just kind of wait and see what happens, this is a good way to see what's happening. <laughs> um, okay. Launching custom rows. Wow, that has taken a while, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Resume? Yeah, it just resumes the preview here. Let's just do it anyway. Let's hit resume over here, because this has taken forever. Oh, now there's a third thing. <laughs> yeah. Haha, build succeeded. It's actually working now. I'm sure it's probably, I don't know, maybe it was because of resume. I don't know. Ah. <sighs> Anybody? Is this fun? For anybody besides me? Yeah, I'm having fun. Mm. Fun waiting. 10R, 10R. Let's go in here, command period, and just stop the process. And command R again. I wonder if, like, putting in my password or something just, like, kind of messed with, like, the actual launching and building. Who, who knows? So, building. I'm not going to go over to the, to the simulator automatically. I want it to just come up. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Already 24 minutes into this this video here. Or so. Oh, who knows? What if I cut some stuff out? Ooh. Then we're not 24 minutes in. We're like less. <laughs> Launching custom rows. Whoa. This is seriously taking a while. Interesting. Well... In the meantime, <laughs> let's just do some more things. So let's actually try this. Maybe this will just like work better than the simulator right now for some reason. Let's hit the play button down here. It did say build succeeded because I hit resume. Okay, this preview should work. Okay, so we're going here, we're going here. Okay, cool. So we want this to be able to actually go to a new view. So let's do that. And you might be thinking, well, how do you, this isn't even an actual row in a list. How do you do that? But... It's way easier than you might think. So let's come inside this for each. Let's just wrap this name row in something. Okay? Let's just wrap this in a navigation button. Navigation button, destination, and a label. So we're going to do this. Destination, and you're thinking, okay, we, we don't have another view to go to or another screen. In your mind, you might be thinking view controller, but really, keep in mind, we're just going to another view. Is a text a view? Like this text view? Yep, that's a view. So let's do that. Let's throw in text for now since we don't have another view built, like another view controller, right? It's not a view controller, but you know what I'm talking about. So let's do some string interpolation here and throw in name, this name right here from the for each, and we'll say names bio. Because we tap on a name like John, Paul, George, or Ringo, and we want to go see their bio. So then we'll go over to the label, hit tab, hit enter, and in here we will just bring in our name row. Uh, yeah, this yeah, this is weird too. Like these weird bugs. So I'm trying to just go here and hit command. Let's see, maybe it's because of this wraparound. 
Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Command delete. Yeah. I'm down here. Command delete. Should just delete the whole row. But, like, this spacing just got all messed. Anyway, hopefully you're not bothered by seeing these, like, bugs I'm, like, <laughs> just, like, dealing with. It's kind of fun to see. Anyway. Okay. Now we got all the names here. Um, and watch this. What? Wait. That just happened already? Yeah. It did. Because... We wrapped this name row in a navigation button. Has a destination with this text view, names bio. See, so watch this. Come over here, Paul. Tap it. Paul's bio. Nice, huh? And it's totally navigation. Like, look at this. I'm going to swipe over. Man, just, it's awesome. Okay, Ringo. Ringo's bio. John. John's bio. This is just rad. So, I know this isn't a list, but it is a scrolling a scrolling view of of like rows right and there's no separator in between there yeah, right now you know i'm not this isn't a video about performance like oh what if you have a bunch of rows but speaking of that right now this isn't going to scroll so look at that it's still like trying to launch interesting indexing pause let's hit command period to cancel that then i cancel this live preview thing here and let's actually go like this let's just Command Q and quit Xcode, if it will. I'm going to quit Xcode, and I'm going to quit the simulator, and I'm going to bring Xcode back up, Xcode beta. And let's just do this together. So we're on custom rows. Go back into that. Could have just opened it up from here, right? But whatever. All right. Hit resume right up here in the corner. Get our preview back. And let's hurry and hit Command R. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. That's nice. Waka, 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 wee, wah, 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 wah. Okay, Command R. Let's run this. Build succeeded. Well, that's fast. And waiting for iPhone 10R to start. Launching custom rows. I'm looking up here at the top. Attaching to custom rows on iPhone 10R. Nice. Okay, just need a little restart is all, right? Now watch it, just like won't even show up here. And I'm like, yeah, that's all it needed. Interesting, what's happening over here? Preferences may be missing at sources, oh, logged ones, logging information, this will only, what the, customer rows, failed to look up current locale via Apple, telling to, okay, whatever. Interesting. Let's let's open up our um, scene, this will probably not have anything to do with it because scene delegate, so it's launching our content view. Yeah. Okay. Command shift Y. Oh, hey, look, it's up. Nice. We can interact with it, right? Unless it's like frozen. I'm frozen? Frozen? What's going on here? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Bugs. Okay. Yeah, they're bugs because I know this works. Works here. Oh, build succeeded on this preview. Oh, hey, it was just like really delayed. Oh, what is going on here? This is a laggy simulator thing going on. Kind of interesting, right? Okay. Oh, man, it is having a rough time. Okay, let's give it a second here. Oh, look at all these like weird things going. Oh, my mouse is like making white lines in the UI. Oh, this is great. Oh, weird. Oh, nice. Totally weird. Okay. Oh, hey. Came back. Let's click on a row. Ooh, whoa. It's like catching up or something. I don't know. Let's quit this simulator again. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Seeing these bugs is like live here in this. Not live, but you know what I mean? Just as I'm doing this tutorial. I'm not going to cut any of this out. I want you to see it. So, Command R again. Let's see if that simulator had <laughs> had a little uh, issue there. It can just work itself out. Okay. iPhone 10R. Okay. Paul, <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, my mouse isn't erasing all the UI this time. <laughs> it's, everything's working. So John, John's bio. And look, it even has a nice, I kind of like this selection. Like it's like a normal button. I, it just worked out like that. I didn't put a button in there. I don't know what the underlying code is, but you know, behind the hood, under the hood, behind the scenes, under the hood, under the hood, behind, under the curtain. I don't know. Okay, so George, highlight, it's kind of nice. I'm just holding down. So I clicked and held down, and then I drag off, and I let go. It doesn't go anywhere. Click, drag off, still holding down, come back up. Nice. George's bio. I can just bring it back like this. It's working great. So now I'm just going to show you one last thing. 
let's add some more to this array so you can see it actually scroll because you know who doesn't want to see it scroll and so let's go here and I'll just type in let's go like this we'll just say so we've got John Paul, Paul George Ringo so that's four five six seven eight nine ten eleven haha uh -huh. so let's go like this and say five six whoa hey hey seven eight nine oh that's a zero I wasn't looking ten I don't look at my hands when I type it's just saying okay nine ten eleven all right there we go let's hit resume here so we can see what's up oh yeah this is what I was going to come back to earlier I said you're going to see this little bug here ish um, kind of in the preview so I'm going to hit command shift y hide the bottom drawer there so you're going to see oh yeah this isn't live for it. so let's hit uh the play button so we can interact with it and wait it's spinning right here you'll see it'll it'll finish in a second oops okay now it's done so now we can interact with it so i'm going to click and scroll like this okay it's nice but look at this the very bottom item doesn't have like a bottom inset but watch this i'll hit command r and run it on the simulator and check this out there are all of our rows, and it does have that inset at the bottom. Hmm. So you see that home indicator, and you can still um, use it, right? So pretty interesting. There's a little little bug. So I guess that's a word of the wise. Uh, it's basically exactly what you're going to see here on the preview, what you're going to see you know, if you run it on a simulator or on a device. But we've found just now, I'm sure they'll fix this bug at some point. Radar, anyone? Hey, hey, hey. Okay, but... Yeah, you now have seen that happen. So that bottom row, inset here on the simulator. Uh, hopefully if you run on device, it also has the inset. I'm assuming it will. Um, but here on the preview, there was uh, no inset there at the bottom. Interesting, right? But yeah, so now we've got our whole thing here. Pretty cool. And since there are only four Beatles, we might as well change this title to, like, you know, uh, musicians, <laughs> artists, musicians. Nice. So... The Beatles, this should resume and update itself. All right, so that is a good way to... Oh, yeah, that's that one thing I was saying. It kind of goes really small and black. <laughs> cool. So now, musicians. Um, and that stopped working right there. Anyway, all right, hopefully this helped you. Um, again, this isn't a video about performance, like scrolling. What if you had a whole bunch of items and things like that? I don't know the answer to that. Um, and right now... As far as I know, the, when I'm filming this video or recording this video, you cannot hide the, the separators in the rows, like in a normal list. So that's why I kind of wanted to show this way. Um, you can do that, and it totally works. See, there are no separators. Go back to the simulator. No separators. Uh, hopefully you like the Beatles. I love the Beatles. Uh, hopefully you like this video. And if you like these videos, you want to see more of them, of course, you subscribe and you can click the bell too that turns on notifications for every time I upload a video. And if you follow me on Twitter, Scott Smith underscore dev, then of course you'll see a tweet right away. Also, when I post a video, let me know if there's anything I can improve on in here, any better ideas you guys have, especially with this. This is not my favorite, this frame part. It seems a little hard-coded-ish to me. Yeah, I'd like to have it more automatic. So uh, yeah, let me know. I hope you like this, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>